Hello, I'm Steve. Welcome to the Patio Heat Channel, where we create visual concepts of infrared heating as well as tips for outdoor comfort. Our one-on-one -on -one customer support helps you make the best decision for your application. We strive to earn your business. Visit our patioheat.com website for sales and more information. Now let's get heating. All right, so here we have this residential application. So this is a fully covered uh, patio. And um, I don't have any information with regards to where any lighting might be or fans or anything of that nature. Um, but what I do have is the uh, floor plan and I did also get an elevation. Um, so let's just go right into the overall dimensions here. So overall dimensions I have is approximately 22 feet 6 inches by approximately, um, we'll just call it 19 feet this direction from edge to edge. And then we have a height over here of about eight feet to the bottom of this beam, nine foot one to the top edge here. Um, these are all approximates. Um, they are to scale here, but they might be a little bit different on the actual plan. The um, ceiling height up here, um, apex or peak up here is at about 14.6 and um, we do have a fireplace we have a couple different seating positions here we have you know just reclining and then some dining over here there is a doorway that uh, showed up on the um, uh, floor plan and then there was an option a and an option b so i'm going to go with this right now um, and this doorway swings into the the uh, patio area over here you can see there's some doorways that go into the residence and those swing into the residence so we're not concerned about that uh, there is a little edge over here that I uh, need to take a look at um, uh, just based on the placement of the heaters. So just bear that in mind as well. Let's see if there's anything else. I think that's about it. Um, oh yeah, and I'm not quite sure if this is going to be enclosed space. Um, so that will have a little bit of bearing on how many heaters you need. However, the amount that I'm choosing now um, won't affect that. Um, but if it's completely open like this, um, basically, you know, with the electric heaters, if you looked at the uh, slab itself and, um, you know, the uh, amount of square footage here, it would call for seven uh, plus heaters um, to heat this whole entire space properly. So we're not going to heat up the entire space because I think seven units would be uh, quite a bit um, and not look appropriate. Um, and I think we can get away with uh, a little bit less than that. So uh, we'll go ahead and look at the options for that. All right. So let me go ahead and turn off the uh, dimensions here and then go ahead and look at uh, what, whoops, what we might do for uh, heaters. So what I've done here is I placed one 6,000 watt unit on the ceiling area at an angle that's pointed straight down to the ground. Um, you can see that the mounting brackets are at the same elevate or so, excuse me slope as the ceiling area is, but the heater is um, level and pointed straight down to the ground itself. Now the clearances above the heater uh, are met with this um, type of application. Now if you feel like you the or excuse me, the slope is uh, greater than what I have here. You could go with a longer bracket. There's a two inch longer bracket, four and a six inch longer bracket that you can get. Um, and that would give you a little bit more clearance above. But what I have here, the slope that I have here uh, does not present an issue. Um, you can see over here as well, not an issue, same thing. And on this side here, obviously I have two units, excuse me. And let's see if I can get this back up here. Uh, so I have two units on this side here just because of the uh, seating arrangements that are shown here. So um, clearances below. Now the doorway does come in effect. That's why I have this unit um, up where I do um, because we want to make sure that we are meeting clearances to any combustible surfaces. Um, below the heater, I need from the edge of the heater out, I need 18 inches on both sides and on both ends as well as 36 inches below the heater itself. So let's see if we can take a look at anything else here. I think that's about it. So let's go ahead and look at um, the footprint of heat. So footprint of heat you can see here that we are covering um, the space fairly decently. Um, this chair here has got plenty of heat. 
this chair over here has got um, a good amount of heat. However, you can see that I'm not covering this particular spot right here, and that's why I placed that model there so you can see that. Um, if we look over here, you can see there is a gap. Excuse me. Let's see if we can get this in here. So you can see that there is a gap of non-covered area here. And um, again, I only did that because of the fact that I think um, placing two more units in order just to cover this space here would be more than uh, a visual uh, issue. And I think, um, you know, at different times, you can obviously just move the chair to the you know right over here and um, get the coverage that you're looking for uh, based on that. Um, now, if um, the amount of space here again i just measured out the slab for about 500 square feet you know again that called out for seven point i don't know four units something of that nature um, but you know these are spot heaters or infrared light waves infrared um, you know again is a light it's a beam and it warms the body up as long as you're in that ray you will feel the warmth if you're outside of the ray like my model here you will not feel the warmth now there could be a little bit of excess uh, warmth that comes off the floor after a few you know maybe a 30 minutes of use um, that you could feel but it's not going to make you warm um, in that spot right there but everywhere else that you are covered that will be more than sufficient uh, also i just went ahead and put one more unit over here just so you can see if there is an area that you want to cover over here that should not be a problem with an additional unit and um, you can see with the doorway here that's still uh, meeting the clearances to combustible so we don't have an issue with that as well all right and then um, just a final thought is um, let me turn this off for a minute and this is something I probably would not recommend. You know, first of all, we have the issue with the doorway here. And if there's a doorway over here, uh, obviously that'll be an issue as well with this unit. And um, it actually is an issue with both units here. Um, you can see that the doorway is hitting the uh, clearances. If this doorway swung out, then that would not be an issue. But um, then the other issue is where do we actually place this unit here because of this edge on the wall here? Um, you know, we could move it out and uh, possibly uh, move it over a little bit, something of that nature, if you still want that extra unit on this side here. But you can see here the coverage with them uh, on the outside edge. The heater is reaching its furthest position. So even if you're sitting here, you're at the furthest um, distance that ray is really penetrating. And um, most people would not feel comfortable even over here or possibly over here. So that's why I chose the um, positions that I did originally, uh, just because I think that is a better option. Same over here. This would be a hotter spot. The heaters are quite a bit lower. And then this would be a cooler spot over here because of the distance that that ray has to travel. So that's why I did not choose this. And then finally, I just want to go into, let's see here. Go back into what I showed originally, which is these units here. And let me turn this off here and then go into the dimensions that I have here. So you can see that I've placed these at uh, three foot six from the center of this post to the center of the heater. And then the heater itself is um, approximately five feet, nine inches from this edge here up to the center of the bracket itself. Um, so this bra bracket itself here, and uh, you can see the height, uh, excuse me, the distance here, I should say, the distance from this edge out would be approximately five feet, you know, three inches. And um, I think that's really about it. Um, the height goes up to the bottom edge of the heater at about, about two feet, 10 inches higher than the bottom edge of this beam, which is eight. So that brings it approximately 12, uh, excuse me, 11 feet off the ground. 
And I think that's about it. Um, I did put this measurement here just to show that uh, with the um, floor plan, I am running it really close to scale, so that should not be an issue. And I think that's about it. All right, well, if you have any questions or you would like us to review your plans, please send your information into designs at patioheat.com. I'm Steve, and would you kindly hit that like button? We don't advertise. We're not monetized. YouTube does not promote our channel unless we receive thumbs up from viewers like you, and we truly appreciate that. Thank you. Have an excellent day.